We won. We're so back. Um, Dave, how was your dinner? I just finished. <laughs> Dave, uh, how was it? Like so many people ordered Uber Eats and they messed up the order. Pretty badly. Pretty, pretty, pretty badly. Uber Eats is literally the worst. I think you should order straight from the restaurant. I did. I ordered straight from the restaurant, but I think they still deliver Postmates. So. Yeah, what they sub it do? out. What are you going to do? You're going to talk about it on your podcast. How about that? Jokes on them. How dare they, really? Um, welcome to the Heron Heads Podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. My name's Julio, and that's Dave, Chris, and Jose. And on behalf of the guys, we want to thank you for stopping by and joining us for episode 68 here on the Heron Heads Podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. Uh, tonight, we're going to be breaking down the match that just ended, Inter Miami. Three, Sporting Kansas City two. Um, for those of you watching live on YouTube, thanks so much for stopping by. And make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're enjoying the show. And a huge shout out to our chief, Heron Heads Matias. Ciao, Abu, Ava, and Mari V. Thank you so much for your continued generous support. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon or get some cool merch, you'll find links for those places in the description wherever you are listening. All right, guys. So finally, Inner Miami stop a winless streak of five matches with the win tonight in a packed stadium in Kansas City. How are we feeling? Relieved. Finally, we did it. It's a five game winless streak, I think it was. And man, we needed this. Not not just we we're out. Julio and I were just talking about it, not just for the three points that we get in the MLS standings, but just for the demeanor of the team for 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 the fans for everything that we've been through the last few games especially after that CONCACAF um uh, elimination man th we really needed this it was um it was a little closer than what I liked it to be than what I wanted it to be but but hey we got we got scores from from Messi Suarez Gomez those have been seems like the three that have been holding our attack up this whole season really so it was nice to see all of them um in the attack and and somehow part Part of the scoring whether it's assist or goals so it was a fun match it was really good uh to the very very end they added nine minutes to to extra time or stoppage time so it it kept us clenched all the way to the very end but man what a relief it feels great to finally uh finally get that win after so many so many matches you gotta love the result but at least when i was watching i was watching angry it feels like to the game i feel like we lost your one stop we left we left a lot of meat on the bone there. <laughs> um, I feel like we could have played a lot better. There was just really bad passing that led to the two goals that we gave up. And then it's pretty funny that their really poor turnover ended up being the the goal to really make uh make the game um just one way, not just a draw. But man, I still am very frustrated with the discipline of this team and just the the efficiency on their passing they have to they have to be better than that um of course you feel happy with with the win at the end but i still can't shake the feeling that there's there's still something really really off with the club jordi alba's injury is not going to be good uh, it is good that we have Begley there to replace him if need be for a long time as opposed to going with no island but yeah, you gotta be thrilled with a with win. They needed three points there. We we can't. We have to stop dropping points to teams that, that were just flat out better than. And I agree with with the the point that most teams are not as good as Inter Miami, so we shouldn't be dropping points anywhere. Yeah, I mean overall we uh, we gotta be happy. We, we won. We haven't been able to to pull out a victory in in yeah. What feels like a month, uh, like you said. It's, it's it's something that you know it, it should be uplifting for the team. I'm excited about it, um, in the sense of may, maybe you know maybe it gets us going a little bit. Maybe it, it gets our our, our uh, attacking up a little bit more. Maybe, maybe they're questioning what they're doing a lot more so than they have in the past. 
Um, the trust may not be there. Uh, just it, it, and we saw that today. To be honest, we saw Gresso. I don't know what was up with Gresso today. Gresso, I'm, I feel like I, I I usually am pretty happy with his performance. You know, I know it's like he's not a fan favorite right now, but I, I always think he's a pretty solid piece that you know you see brings a little bit of a, like like relax. It's it, it'll it'll be okay kind of kind of vibe, but. Man, he was he was terrible today. I I don't, I don't think he ever put a, a good pass on anyone's foot. Like I, I felt like it was always just constantly uh, bouncing really hard off of somebody, or just going very far away. Or instead of it being a lead pass, it was a, a lag pass. I, I I don't know what what was what was going on with him, but it was it was totally killing our vibe. And then you you throw in Toto, just was, was like he had he had the impression today of just like. I'm just I'm just gonna go crazy and I'm gonna do everything and I'm, I'm not gonna follow follow any kind of order and uh, I don't know I, he he brought me unsettled a lot of times as well. Um, Cello, I I I don't know man he had some really weird um, takes in the middle of the pitch that he lost the that, that we ended up giving up the goal just a weird uh, uh, a lot of weird stuff was happening and and, and that's what I think hap- happens when like you're not. Your people are trying to do a little bit too much, a little more than they should be doing, because they're just trying to make plays happen. Because we're just in a funk, and that I think Redondo will help with this. I I I want to I want to think he will because it's like we we're not getting any production from that right side at all. And I don't know if it's something where like uh, Toto and Chelo are not seeing eye to eye, but I've noticed like Toto like looks him off. He's like I'm not passing to this guy. And I'd rather I'd rather give over there. But it's it's just that we're not getting any any kind of flow on that side. Even when uh, Kremaski came in, I, he he was trying his best to get to just move around on all throughout the pitch. But whenever he got on the right side, it, it, it just like just there was no flow there. So and there's nothing he could do there. Um, curious, I'm gonna I'm curious to see what how that develops because before we kind of had we, we had a very solid attack on both sides, and right now it seems to be that we're going back to that old. Inter Miami, where we're just focusing on the Jordi Alba side, which now we don't have him. So it's like I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do now. Yeah. So um, I thought Toto definitely started a little wild, but he seemed to calm down after he got his yellow card, and maybe he he sort of played more within himself, which we we've said a lot is kind of his what he should do to play at his best is to just play within himself and not get out of position, not lunge into tackles. He calmed down a bit. Cello was disappointing for most of today. Um, He wasn't so bad later in the game, but the first half was really rough to watch. And yeah, Alba's injury, we'll see how serious it is over the next few days. Hopefully it's nothing too serious, but Although Negri is a capable backup, we obviously lose a lot without Alba. So it is going to be interesting to see how we progress, play forward from the back, given that Redondo is probably out at least another month and a half, two months. Um, But it's going to be really interesting to see because it does seem that Toto tends to play it back the other way rather than playing up to uh, Cello. So it'll be interesting. Um, another bright spot today was that Kramaski finally made his season debut, and I thought he looked pretty good. Um, speaking of people that like need to help progress the ball forward, you see a lot of like a, a, a lot of why people rate him so highly. Um, his his skills on the ball. Um, it's been so long since we've seen him that like you kind of forget how how good of a dribbler he is. And it was just really nice to see him back on the pitch. So I'm super happy we finally saw him. And when we went up, what was it, 2-1, I was like, mm, I don't know if Ben Hag gets on now because now we're winning. We may not need like an offensive-minded player. And while I was extremely disappointed with the second goal, which was a really nice goal scored by Tommy from Kansas City, but again, it was off of a corner. Um, when we when they tied the game, I was like, okay, well, maybe now Benha sees the pitch, and he did, and and I thought he helped make a lot of plays. He found himself in really good positions in the box, and people just missed him, or he, his first touch, I think, was just straight at the goalkeeper, but super nice to see Benha back on the pitch. 
Yeah, he's it's funny. He's just lightning in a bottle. And that's why I think we've discussed it here that we like him best as a as a player off bench, just because when he comes in, it's almost like magic comes off right off off the bat. And uh, but yeah, he let's see if he might have to get a little more forward because of the absences all up on up and down the roster. But yeah, it's it's true. You kind of forget how what like what he brings to to the table, and then. Immediately watching him progress the ball with Messi again, still in sync with Messi right from the get go. The back and forth, the pinging it back and forth, the, the heel flick back. It's just, it's just really, really nice to see somebody have that rapport with Messi as well. Um, yeah, this, this club, they need players. <laughs> they need players badly. And uh, unfortunately, we keep dropping like flies. But yep, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna move forward and hopefully we'll have. Kramaski regularly be involved in the in the attack, and he's a and he's a brother for sure. He he he's kind of he gives us that uplift that uh, I felt the same way when I saw Redondo playing. It was just something something different that we're not getting from the other guys. Where he, he had a he had a run from the right back side. I feel to he was just like here's my you know he was just Bring the white yeah, he was just crossing through the middle of the pitch just like that, right? And and it was just like a lot of back and forth in between that with people. And he was just progressing the ball very nicely up the pitch. He ended up being left wing out of nowhere. It, um, it, but it's, it's it's exactly what we need. Where it's like you find the you, you find the crease, you take a, you take advantage. You you like like Julio said, he, his dribbling is beautiful. It's it's very uh, with his little hair just flowing. It's like you know, it's just like very relaxed. Um, it was it was fun. It was fun to see him play again. He's when he first got on the pitch last time. I don't know if you guys remember. He, it was lightning in a bottle, like Dave said. It just you know just goals galore. If, if uh, and it wasn't not only not not necessarily from him, but from someone around him. Just just because his presence just oozes offense, you know. Yeah, it brings that extra energy that um, that the attack direly needs because. We know Suarez doesn't have that same energy. He has the energy, but he doesn't have that same uh, pace or like quickness that that we expect. He, he doesn't um, have the knees. The knees. He doesn't have the knees. Yeah, <laughs> but but Benja and and that's something that that Redondo brought. That it's a shame that he's not here right now. And it's something that Gomez brings. All of those guys, they're young, vibrant. Um, they want to. They have that that forward attacking mentality that that without them, this team does not have. This team just it, it just does not have. We've seen it when they're not out there. Um, but it was nice to see. I said in our chat that uh, right right when they were about to sub them out, which was kind of a mess with the ref. I don't know if you guys noticed the ref was kind of all over the place. Um, but it, I said he's gonna he's he's gonna come out like an energizer bunny because that's what we're used to seeing from him. And and he did, man. First touch, his first touch was in the box and and a possible goal scoring attempt. Um, so man, that's what we need. That's what we need on this team, and it's what we've been missing, especially the last five matches that, that we've we've been out there without grabbing grabbing that win. So you brought up an, another player that I would love to talk about, and that's Diego Gomez, who has continued to impress and two goal involvements today. Um, the first was a goal that he scored himself off a beautiful pass from Messi, and he just he, he kind of hit it straight at the keeper, just off to the keeper's left. Um, the keeper wasn't able to get, I think, his foot down enough to stop it. Uh, hit the back of the net, much needed um, from Diego Gomez. And then the second one, the second goal was a, the, I guess it was the go-ahead goal, right? It was the match winner. Um, born completely out of his tenacity, completely out of his, uh, his engine and his drive to get the ball back, win the ball back in a very dangerous position and hit a really nice pass back across the box to Suarez, who has scored a few goals in his life. I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of Luis Suarez. Um, that may have been the easiest goal he's ever scored because it was a tap in. Diego Gomez was able to hit the ball across the box and get the keeper completely out. And just like, I can't, I can't give enough credit to the work that Diego Gomez put in he felt like one of the few players when everyone seemed to be playing really disjointed and we were like, ah, oh, same old story, same, same as Monterrey. Um, Diego Gomez was one of the few alongside Messi and Suarez that we were saying, Hey, th 
these these few guys are are kind of the bright spots right now, and they're having good games. But Diego Gomez outside of Messi, definitely the man of the match for me. Yeah, Gomez. He the way that just he controls the midfield. He we've said it before, the possession, the strength that he brings to that midfield, and and just the tenacity to just keep on going. The engine that he has is is like no other. He has to have the best engine in the whole team in the in, in all of Miami because maybe him and and Benja are up there, but man, he's always constantly going. He's always attacking. He's trying to press all the time, and and it worked out for that last goal. Uh, it was it was part of his tenacity that he just took it away and, and was able to pass it across the keeper. The keeper was in a horrible position. His, um, but Suarez was in, in the right spot at the right time and, and easy easy little tapping. Um, but it's so nice to have Gomez in there and and we we keep saying it, but I just can't imagine what this team would be doing if they don't know was in there. It's it sucks to keep bringing it back, but but man, all these young guys that that are just peaking at, at, at the right time and and we don't have everybody in there but hopefully soon we'll have everybody in there and we will see some more magic happen uh but man gomez is just a breath of fresh air when he has the ball even when he doesn't have the ball even off the ball he's he played great today making amazing runs all night he, he yeah but he's not that much of a, if we're gonna rate breath of fresh airs i wouldn't say he's as like fresher than kromaski's with his little hair and you know like, like whenever gomez is running he's running like you know, like <laughs> know. it's very clumsily. I don't know, but uh, quick uh, stats. I'm the statistician here, obviously. Um, 60% we won the ball possession battle, um, and 84% uh, pa- accurate passes, very good. And um, XG 1.03, pretty, pretty great considering we scored three goals. Beautiful. Thank you for that, Mr. Uh, statistician, Jose. Um, so let's let's go to the very beginning. And the lineup comes out. And interestingly, the Inner Miami social media accounts did not post the lineup in formation. They sort of just were like, here are the players that are playing. And it was just in list form. Um, so immediately, it jumped out to me that um, we were going to play a 4 3 3. And I was like, okay, this is a good start to this match before the match even begins. What was kind of confusing was the lineup came out a little bit late, but the like media write-up sort of started leaking out first, and they only had three listed defenders. They only listed Toto, Freire, and uh, Jordi Alba as defenders. They listed Cello as a midfielder. So then people were like, oh my gosh, is this going to be a back three? No, no, no. Tata rolled out properly with a four at the back. It was mostly a 4-3-3. Three, three. Messi always sort of floats around. You could say maybe it was like a 4-4-2 four, four, diamond. Um, but four at the back, we had poor giveaways that led to the, their first goal. Cello made an awful run into the midfield, gave it away really easily. And the second goal is a corner. That, I don't... I don't necessarily blame our defense for either of those goals. You know what I mean? Like I, people love saying our defense is really bad and Cello is a defender and gave the ball away. So granted that falls on him, but that's an individual error, not a unit error. To me, the defense played okay. Toto was super aggressive early. Cello gave the, had the bad giveaway, but overall like, you, when you shoot yourself in the foot, teams are going to score a goal. When you're Drake Calendar and you give the ball away to a Monterrey player five yards from the box, you're going to concede a goal. Um, four at the back is definitely a formation. It facilitates the offense so much better for whatever reason than when we have five at the back. And it has to be the formation that we come out moving forward. So I was very happy that we came out with a four at the back. I'm sure you guys share the same sentiments. Well, that that is a big time listener, so I'm pretty sure he he was listening to us. So, so thank you, Tato. I wonder if he was uh, listening to our our live watch along too, because seems like it was clueless last match. <laughs> so, getting, go ahead. No, okay. Um, so, getting into the game, Cello has the poor giveaway, and Miami go down six minutes into the match. I think it was um, really 
just awful way to start. And Dave put it in our chat. Here we go, chasing another match. And because it seemed like this past month we've chased every single match that we've been in. Um, we didn't have to wait too long. The Diego Gomez goal came when, guys, like in the 25th, 30th minute, somewhere thereabouts. So, our, our, was it our first goal in the 17th minute? Oh, it was that much? I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. Anyways, we didn't have to wait super long. Um, Messi found Diego Gomez. Gomez made such a nice run from the midfield to get into the attacking position, and Messi just picked him out perfectly. Um, at that point, it was 1-1, and I believe it stayed that way into halftime. And I felt like really after they scored their first goal, we started owning the, the match a little bit more. We started maintaining possession a little bit better. And I never felt fully secure with how the game was sort of going. Um, but we were definitely controlling the match after Kansas City scored their first goal. So um, then second half starts, and Messi just finds himself in more space than he ever should if you're the opposing team. And scores just just a, another beautiful goal to add to his list of beautiful goals. I, I like there's there's no I I've run out of ways to sort of describe what Messi can do on the pitch when he's given space. But it was just a perfectly placed ball across it was, goal. It was almost the same location as the 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 penalty kick or not penalty like a free kick that that he that he missed by like this much same distance it's amazing the pinpoint accuracy he has just from that that same little area is it's beautiful to watch and at first i wasn't like i don't know i guess i, I didn't react like i normally do when i saw it i was like i was kind of in shock like did he did he make that like and then yeah i saw the ball bouncing in the back of the net went crazy while my daughter was asleep next to me <laughs> Yeah, I mean, very when, silent. Yeah, no, I mean, when when he when he scored, I, I kind of thought, okay, yeah, he scored. But but when you when you watch the the highlight of it, you're like, man, that was pretty. That was a tough shot. That was beautiful. Top, when top. he collected when he collected the ball and turned, and I realized how much space he had around him, I'm like, <laughs> this is going to be a pretty good shot here. Yeah. No, you expect you don't expect him to have that much space ever. That's 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 the thing. Anytime he has that space, you know he's gonna try to just put that ball in the bat net from whatever distance. So it, I mean, that's that's what you want to see from Messi. That anytime that he passes up on the ball, when he has that kind of space, it's infuriating. And you could tell in this match, anytime he had the ball, he was looking to be dangerous. He was, I think, he was carrying a chip on his shoulder from their elimination in the Concacaf uh, tournament. So you know that he wanted to really to really put it on on this team and he's probably frustrated that it was 3-2 honestly he, he probably wants to blow the doors off of one of these teams and doing it in a venue like Arrowhead Stadium which is probably the biggest crowd that this club has has gone up against um that's that's something that's nice to see and also I hate Kansas City so that was a little little extra that made me a little happy to see everybody leaving that, that stadium upset well I can't even say everybody because I feel like a, a good chunk of those fans were were there for Inter Miami. It was funny. It was probably hard to see because of the the Argentinian uh, kits are are that light blue that kind of match with the Kansas City one. But I'm sure. I mean, the Messi chants in the stadium were insane throughout the match, multiple times throughout the match. And of course, we had people running onto the freaking pitch again. Like it's getting really old real quick. Um, but but yeah, there was a ton of Messi fans or Inter Miami fans in there. They, they said it was uh, split down the middle, which is crazy. Seventy-two thousand fans, then and it was split down the middle. That's crazy. I mean, it, you couldn't tell that, to be honest, from from my from my couch. I couldn't tell that, but like it, it didn't like it, it looked. It didn't look. I didn't see a lot of pink. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't like maybe maybe they just weren't showing it, but it just it didn't appear as that. But well, that's what you, that's you what Chris really is saying. Heard it. You did hear it though when when he scored. You're like, okay, yeah, there's a there's a lot of fans there. Just any time he got on the ball, you could hear it. Um, people were cheering. They were really only jeering uh, at Jordi Alba, who got under their skin a bit. And he just, before he went down injured, um, he had a tackle that wasn't called a foul, that 
after replay really seemed like a foul, but it wasn't called a foul. The player went down. It was a foul that wasn't called. And Alba was telling the guy, like, get up, stop throwing yourself on the ground. And just, like, riling him up. I'm like, dude, love just it. get on with the I play. No, what's wrong I, with that? I kind of love it, but I'm also he's it. just, like, continuously towing he the line. Had, he just had a red well, card in the last game. Uh, it I mean, doesn't matter. That was last game. It has nothing to do with this game. It's a different tournament. But what, what I don't understand is they didn't call it a foul on the pitch. He's barking at the player, and they stop the game because he's barking at the player. What the hell is that? Since when it is just is just talking to somebody something that you stop play for, and then you guys are mad at him for barking. And I'm like, dude, what? Wait, wait, come out. Nothing's called. He, Why the hell are you gonna stop the match? Because he's talking to the guy. He probably wasn't just talking to the guy. The referee went up to him and told him, like, "Come on, dude. Like, seriously, like, telling him I didn't call the they, foul on you, and you're still talking crap." Like, the, come the, on. The replay relax. showed that that I would like charge at the guy. Yeah, but the fact the fact is that it wasn't called a foul, and he was just yelling at the guy, like, "Get up." No, I loser. think he charged at him. I think he charged. Him. I I, th- I think that they had to get in the way. They he run this in this sport. You have to run. I don't know what to tell you. Figure it out. If they would have started swinging each other, they're I guess they oh, would have. Then, to stop then you stop way. the match. You stop the match if they're actually doing something that's against the rules. But running at somebody, when is that against the rules? So to me, and this is nothing new with Jordy. He's done this his whole career, but it's just. It's just a really bad habit, in my opinion, because he does it whether he has no previous card, whether he already has a yellow card and is towing the line for a red card. He just doesn't care. He's just like, I play by this, by this. Uh, and that's what got him to be where he at, where he is, right? Like, oh, definitely, that's what, that's what makes definitely. Him a, a, Chip a on his shoulder. Player. Yeah, absolute like competitor, so, obviously. Um, the only yeah, question that we have I just, I just, when it happened, I was like, "You got away with it, <laughs> like you won." <laughs> Maybe that's what he was saying. I got away with it. Now stand yeah, he's up, like, loser. sucker. <laughs> Get this up, was finally, again. <laughs> You know that this was because I, I feel like Jordy's had some pretty bad games recently, and this was finally a Jordy game. He, he made an impact. All the way until until he got hurt, unfortunately. But he made an impact all match. Him, his connection with Messi today was was like no other. I mean, he he was on it today, and it's finally nice to see after some poor matches from Jordy across the board. So it was nice to see that um nice to see that come about again. Yeah. So for those of you that weren't able to watch, um, Jordy Alba did go down uh, completely without any contact. Uh, just started clutching his hamstring. So it does seem like he has some sort of hamstring injury. Um, we'll we'll see how long he's out for. He was able to walk off the field under his own power, uh, but he was visibly frustrated, obviously, when he came off the pitch and sat on the bench. And it does bring up the question again of why did Tata not make subs midweek? Um, once the game was out of hand, he had plenty of time to, to take out some of these older players given the amount of time that they're having to play on the every every single match. I mean, we had Negdi available midweek. You know, why wasn't he brought on for 20 minutes? Messi was out there for 90 minutes against Monterrey. Why? You're just risking these soft tissue injuries. These players need recovery. They're traveling. They're playing two, three games a week. They need to – Tata needs to do a better job of rotating this team because even today, right, like – we had Alba who came out due to injury. We had Kremaski who was really the only true sub early. And then Bright was subbed on really late. I'm, it may have even been an injury time um, or in stoppage time. It There needs to be more. There needs to be more. And I know the, the bench is very short right now, but we're really risking these soft tissue injuries and they're going to keep recurring. And it's going to become a vicious cycle if that doesn't really get a hold of it. And I don't know who needs to get in his ear to, to tell him, hey, do it. I don't know if it needs to be this show, but something needs to change, in my opinion. It's it it hurts even more because after the match against Monterrey, they asked him the question, "Why no substitutions?" And his his one word response was "youth." Negri's twenty eight years old. That's not a young player. You could put him in for Alba. Like that's there's there's things and also like who cares if you're young? You're getting the door blown off of you. Like that's 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 such a poor excuse. 
And maybe this time, yeah, he only made one true sub. The others were were injury related subs, but he needs to start making these subs. The whole for the whole purpose of having all these signings is to have to be able to to rotate your older players. You want to be able to to to, to like extend their legs and run time. Which is weird, that right? young that young excuse thing is is complete BS because Noah Allen was your third center back in a back five. Like, come on, man, don't give that youth garbage. He's what 18, 19 years old, and he's not even a, your good 18 and 19 year old playing back there. What, why that's, we, that's a garbage excuse. Guys, why are we talking about the last game? We don't want to talk about that game. No, it, it has to do with, with Jordi Alba's injury today, or, or it possibly yeah. has to do with that. Gotcha. Did you know? All right. And let me let me pose a question. Who who is the man of the match and why does Chris think it's Drake Calendar? My guess is Messi. David. It's probably Messi. Chris. Just to be different, I'll go with Gomez. Gomez. Just gonna go. Gomez had 9.1 so sofa score rating. Pretty high. Oh, ball. you're going by sofa score. Yeah. Not sofa the score. actual man of the match. That's yeah. Jose's Bible right there. <laughs> right. And then and, and Leo was uh, 8.8. 8. That was good. And then Tommy, 8.6 on the other side. And Drake had we'll uh, probably the worst of the match at 6.1. The worst, actually. Which is weird because he, I mean, both of those goals were off of turnovers, right? Well, no, one, one was a set piece. He just didn't have to do much. He didn't have to make like yeah. he made yeah, yeah, one save. How many Jose, can you check? I don't know if you still have it open. How many saves Drake Calendar had? Because might have only been two. I'm gonna guess three. Yeah, it was it was not very so like in this as far as how one rating is calculated. Yeah, yeah, as far as yeah, rating is calculated, sense. like he just didn't do anything. Once. Enjoy. Imagine if he hadn't different score. <laughs> Interesting stat right here for Drake Calendar. Once you click on him, he had zero punches. I don't know what that means. It could, could never be, be Jordy. Just and punch the ball out. I know, but it's just interesting stuff. <laughs> Are you done <laughs> with the Drake Calendar? None landed. None landed. <laughs> How many done? power punches? <laughs> How many what was, jab, what was his have? jab stat? <laughs> no uppercut. No. <laughs> and he had 74% accurate passes. How about that, guys? You know, we're getting there. <laughs> this is riveting stuff. So, Jose, Messi's Messi score was an 8.8 because people are asking in the yeah. chat. Yeah, I'm sorry, what were they asking? Messi's player rating, 8.8. Yeah, he had an 8.8 .8 player rating on Sofa score. There you go. Yeah, we'll probably put Gomez over, over Messi there. It's just the defense and. And that tenacity he, he that it was Messi it. had that one turn, the one opportunity where he kind of fudged and it. That was it. Diego and Gomez and the free kick off target, just barely. That's with Diego Gomez having a yellow card too, so he probably had an even higher match rating. True. Excellent, okay. excellent job, Jose. Statistician shows up again two times in one episode. You guys are really getting your money's worth here. Um, so, looking ahead, we have Nashville at home next. Uh, it's a pretty highly anticipated match. I've, it's one of the few matches that I've heard people actually talking about locally, being like, "Oh yeah, the Nashville match." You know, I'm already getting tickets, and this was a couple weeks ago. Um, it's a rematch of the League's Cup final um, between these two clubs. Uh, it should be really fun. The Mugtar Doghouse will be, you know, in full effect again, Jose. Um, Schaffelberg, you know, we we beat them in both matches in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. So um, we've now beaten them in three straight matches. So they'll be they'll be looking to make a statement, especially at Chase Stadium. Uh, it should be it should be a, a lot of fun. Um, those games are usually usually pretty tight, although last time we sort of blew the doors off of them. Yeah, this Jose guy is always on point. Always. Um, what would we do without him? <laughs> who knows? But uh never allowed yeah I I thought I thought, well, firstly, it's just so nice to get back in, in the win column. Um, I thought, since we really talked a lot of Data after one today, I think it's only fair that we talk a little bit about him today. Um, I thought he did, a, a obviously, a better job, but I thought he did an okay job managing this match. 
it did seem like the players came out with some good energy in the second half. Um, there was a sub, which in my opinion is better. That has room for improvement still, but it does seem that positive steps were made in this match. I, I think also we are we, he was forced to do a four four a four three three. How about that? I, I don't think it had anything to do with him wanting a five the, the five men back. It, it was it was a smaller if, if I'm not mistaken because I, I was listening to Twelman. It was an it was a more narrow pitch today than usual, correct? Because we're in a different stadium. Yeah. Okay. With yeah, that yeah. Being said, but but the narrowness, the difference in narrowness, we're talking about like a couple yards. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Maybe you know, in Data's world does. How does that? You, you, we're gonna start saying we know what what Data's thinking now. Certainly not. So perhaps maybe you know he's like ah you know so narrower pitch let's uh, do four three three it, it won't work so but let's try it anyways that's probably how I imagine it went. I guess you know if all these podcasts want us to do this four three three I'll show them again why it's not effective. I've never yeah. seen a fan base come more together than after that Monterrey match and just bashing on Tata and his his five three two. Yeah, I mean, winning cures all. So um, this win helps gloss over some of his shortcomings. Um, Messi was able to score a wonder goal. Gomez scored a, or Gomez made a really great play for the final goal. And you know, we need we need more rotation to keep these guys healthy. We hope that Alba's injury isn't too serious. Um, you know, these hamstring injuries usually cost players a, a few games. You know, Robert Taylor, again, wasn't available today. Campana wasn't available today. So we we really hope these guys, and when I say these guys, I mean the people that are in charge of the recovery and the training and in charge of rotating this team start managing a little bit better because right now we're dropping like flies. It's every every match you can point to a new injured player. I, I love the the question that Hector posed. By the way, I'm gonna leave that one for David since he passes by all the time. It's the same thing. I, every time I drive by it, I try like to peek over the the fences to see what's going on there, and, and it's just I'm not seeing any movement either. I'm sure they're just shoveling dirt around to make it look like they're doing something. But what was the projected opening for that stadium next year? For, for next for year, the, 25. Yeah. For those yeah. on Spotify, uh, he's talking about a comment there. Uh, that pulls a question. Uh, Wait a minute. Aren't you the one who brought up the comment? The dork? <laughs> <laughs> I, I threw you to the wall and you just answered the question. And <laughs> I didn't even set you up at all. But but let me set you up. So the, he was he was asking about the new stadium on what, when it's actually going to open up. Uh, so that's what David's answering. Go ahead, David. Yeah, they're saying that there's not a – that commenter, Hector, says that he drives by and hasn't seen any progress. And I agree. Every time you go through there, it's it, – there's no movement. You would think that by now with the stadium projected to open 2025 that you would at least start seeing some structural things come up. But as of right now, it just looks like they're they're working on the grounds just and flat, nothing right? else. Yeah. And maybe I mean, I'm not I'm not a construction guy. So maybe the, the project is one of those things that they just kind of built. They have those pre pre built sections that will come up quickly. But um, it's not encouraging that we're not seeing anything being built vertically at this stage. Um, but who knows? Maybe maybe I just don't know anything about about building stadiums, which I don't think I'd know anything about that. But you would ex you would assume to see oh, some sure. peek over the fences by now. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be a, such an addition to the city. It's, it's going to be so great right in the middle of uh, be between what? Uh, Miami Springs, Brownsville, Little Havana, Alapata area. It's, it's going to be really right in the Thick of it right next to the airport. Should be fun. Dave's as much of a stadium builder as Jose is a statistician. How about that? <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment to me or just to Jose. Everyone Tune in that. next week, folks, and find out. Um, Chris, any any closing thoughts here? Or sure any do. other we, we topics? Talk about, we didn't talk about we, uh, weekend standings or what happened around the leagues. So we got to talk about that. Go for Guess it. Guess what, guys? We are number one in the supporter shield standings. Right above we're, we're tied in points with, with Red Bull, 
but we do have the um, the goal differential over them. Uh, so that's nice to see. Do we have an extra um, game refreshing. played? Yeah, we have an extra game played, but as as it stands right now, we're we're ahead. Um, but yeah, Red Bull tied today, which which helped. They tied zero zero, which helped us uh, quite a bit. Um, what other interesting matches went on and today? Columbus is actively in a match. It's zero yes, zero, but if they zero, zero. win, they will jump back into first place. Yeah, so right now it's 0 0 at the 89th minute. So that's one to keep watching uh, as soon as we finish here. And um, yeah, no, another crazy match. Oh, Orlando beat DC today. That's nice. Orlando's been well, having well, a very well, rough well, year. Huh? Well, <laughs> yeah. That's where Hulu is today. There was a Hard Rock, Hard Rock boost into Miami and Orlando to both win plus 1,000. This guy took it. Did you take it? Ah, nice. Yes, sir. Nice. How, much, how much did we win? Ten dollars, baby. <laughs> Some high rollers over here, guys. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. I'm done. And you saw somebody, I think it was shoes. Shoes asked about the Discord. Jose, any updates on the Discord? Yeah, I'm constantly just typing things on the Discord. I, I'm I'm on it by myself. I, I I'm not very technically savvy at all with this stuff. As a matter of fact, when I when they first gave me the Discord, they started telling me. Here, here, just download it. it. Just download <laughs> it and um, and just sign in. So I did, and then I just started sending messages. And then Chris is the one running the Discord, and then he says, "Oh, so you keep sending me private messages? You're not doing anything." <laughs> okay, well, I don't know the type. He's more of a numbers it's, guy. He's not so much yeah. a computers guy. Correct. Let's get this Discord thing figured out. I think I think it's it's about time that we get this thing figured out and and it's, launched. It's pretty much ready. So I mean, we just gotta spread the word. But, so uh, it's, we'll, it's we'll, ready. Fix, we'll have to fix a few little things while we do it, but but I mean we could we could give it to the people. If it's yeah, ready. That's, we'll that's we'll share race. we'll share a link. Um, we'll share a link in the next video. How about that? Let's do a race. <laughs> what we'll, we'll gets what we'll gets launched first? The Discord or, or the new stadium? <laughs> I love that we'll joke. The, we'll get the Cheers. Discord up. We'll get the Discord up by by the preview for the national match. How about that? Yeah, yeah we'll Perfect. have it up. Perfect. Otherwise, Jose shaves his head. Right. Yeah. Those are the rules, Jose. We don't make them. <laughs> yeah, we don't make them. It's copyright now that it's out in in the public domain. <laughs> and once we do get the Discord going, we apologize ahead of time if Jose starts DMing you because he has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> we actually don't apologize. That's what you signed up for by joining the Discord. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> <I'm not sorry>. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, a very happy show finally. Uh, on the back of an inter Miami victory. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Those of you watching live on YouTube chatting, it always, uh, livens up everything. Um, before you guys head out, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you haven't already follow us at the Heron heads on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Um, we share news notes, information. We'll be posting updates on Jordi Alba's injury situation, as well as the situation of other players that are hurt. And um, from us at the Heron Heads, thanks so much for stopping by. Your first stop for all things Inter Miami. And we'll catch you on the next one.